is everything that you read online truthful or does it even have any element of truth whatsoever many a times you'll find in whatsapp group or on facebook posts links shared of information labeled as important especially when it touches on health many of these links have been shared virally and its popularism gives the impression that it's the truth phrases such as research has shown accompanied by a number of statistics or according to dr so and so such phrases give the impression that there's some veracity to that statement but is this the case i sit down with africa check a fact checking organization to just look at some of these viral posts that have made its way maybe to your whatsapp group to your facebook post and vincent Nyeth, the deputy kenya editor will be telling us about these stories First I ask, how do we know what to believe and what not to believe online? Well, credible information is supported by facts. And people who spread credible information can usually back it up with sources that are credible in themselves, which means they are up to date, they are produced by reputable bodies, and the people who provide this information usually have, you know, credentials that can be verified. Um, also, such information is usually not cherry-picked. So this is not information that has been chosen in order to, you know, to show a particular side of a story or to hide a particular one. So this is this is credible information that you can believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually on Facebook and Instagram and social media nowadays, it is becoming more and more important to ask whether information is credible. But when somebody says, according to Dr. Masi Korir, for example, yes. and in this case we'll be looking at according to Dr. Gupta, yes. and they give a whole list of information, that first statement gives the indication that, you know, this is a person of authority, mm -hmm. so whatever is listed here really has to be the truth. Mm -hmm. So how does one go about um, shift, uh, sifting information from there so that they know even this according to Dr. So-and-so may not actually be the, the truth. Well, you've, you've mentioned a good place to start. In this case, we go asking, who is Dr. Gupta? Um, we can find out who Dr. Masi Korir is if we go to the relevant authorities and find that there is actually a Dr. Masi Korir. In our case, we went and looked for a Dr. Gupta and we couldn't find anybody of that name uh, from the institution that he purported to be from. So what we found, because we were attracted to this because this whole issue of miracle cancer cures was spreading virally online, what Dr. Gupta was saying is that you don't need to get cancer unless you're careless, mm -hmm. that it is yeah. a thing that everyone can avoid with very few steps. And we found Dr. Gupta was apparently saying that research from you know, the Maryland College of Medicine. Mm -hmm. This is not an institution that actually exists. It used to be there. It was founded in 1807, but in 1812 it became the University of Maryland. So it doesn't exist anymore. It's not existed for more than 100 years. So that was the first thing we found. Mm -hmm. The photograph purporting to be Dr. Gupta, when we did a reverse image search of it, we found it only existed in relation to this cancer claim, mm -hmm. which means that outside of this specific claim there is no person of this nature so why was this story viral what, what was it about this story that made it so viral what makes such stories viral is because they appear to solve difficult problems mm -hmm. uh, in cancer in, in Kenya for example we have seen there's a lot of anxiety about rising cancer cases mm -hmm. so someone who comes out and says I have the cure for your problem that person attracts a lot of readership online. And so you get a lot of people because they want to believe that this is the easy thing to do as opposed to what we, are, what we see about the disease where a, a treatment is difficult and it's expensive. Someone who is coming up with a magic cure 
is likely to attract a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and I see it was shared 123,000 times. Exactly. How in you you are in the online space. Yes. 123,000 times may appear small. Is it small or in what scale is this? Well, this is just one post. Um, and, and this is the thing, this is just one post. Mm -hmm. There are multiple posts, mm -hmm. yeah? And each of them are shared this, this number of times. Mm -hmm. uh, when we're doing this fact-checking, a lot of times when we're writing a report like this, we, can't, we don't list all the posts that have been shared of one piece of misinformation because there are very many. So this is one that just shows you the extent mm -hmm to which this has moved online. And just to note that after we published our fact check of Dr. Gupta's cancer cures, it has moved and been shared more than 13,000 times online. So there are people who are reading this and, 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 and taking a lot of interest. It's getting a lot of interest in, in, in the reading public. Could we have a look at it? Was this um, particular posting, the Facebook post, yes. the first one that was done in, in Kenya or? Well, it's not necessarily in Kenya. It's just that the readers in Kenya read it a lot. Mm -hmm. So you can see here, this was February 3rd this year, for example. Mm -hmm. And it's a very long post. And that's the thing. It looks very comprehensive, mm -hmm. right? So now we can see there Dr. Guru Prasad Reddy, yes. Osh State Medical University, Moscow, Russia. Yes. So is that? No, these, these, are, these are not people whom you can actually track down like this particular doctor, you go looking for him, you wouldn't find him. And that's a problem when you're talking with someone of authority. If we are in Kenya, for example, I should be able to go and find out uh, where you know, doctors are registered and be able to actually find that there is a doctor mm -hmm. who has this name. Mm -hmm. And even if you do find a real person, you have to look at their credentials. Mm -hmm. Do they actually have a degree in medicine? Are they a doctor, as they say? Mm -hmm. Or if they have a doctorate, a doctorate in what? You know, so it has to be something that is clearly professionally relevant to what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And the moment you don't have that, then you can begin to have questions about, you know, whether what they're saying is actually true. Okay. Yeah. And then looking at some of the um, information or some of the things they've said, like drinking hot lemon water can prevent cancer, yes. uh, no food three hours before bedtime. Uh, these are very many phrases. Yes. Is there any element of truth in any of these phrases according to what you found out as Africa Check? Well, what we found out was that usually with a lot of misinformation, there is a small kernel of truth. Mm -hmm. So you will find that there are certain things that are true, but not, but within, you know, accompanying those kernels of truth, you will find that there are often huge lies that are put in there. Mm -hmm. So. You know, in, in this case, you can see that very many things are often, you know, ridiculous. You know, eating chicken backside can cause stomach cancer, right? You know, never eat fruits after meals. I mean, what is that? Mm -hmm. right? Eat fruits most of the time are a dessert. Yeah, a dessert, you know. Don't take tea during menstruation period. So some of these things are, um, are quite, you know, ridiculous when you think about them. But if you were to go, you can see, like, don't think. Some of these things are ridiculous, but if you go further up here, Right? This is the advice that is put here, you know, stop all sugar intake. That sounds very authoritative because we know sugar is bad for you, excess sugar, diabetes and so on. So that really hinges on something people can use. And then blend a whole lemon with a cup of hot water and drink, you know, for one to three months first thing before food and cancer would disappear. Right? And there's the Maryland, Maryland College, of, College Medicine. of Medicine. You see? It's a thousand times better than chemotherapy. Look at that. So this is someone who's coming to say, you know, I'm on your side. That expensive chemo, you don't need, you don't need that. Use this. And then here, drink three spoonfuls of organic coconut oil morning and night and cancer will disappear. So what you find is that a lot of these products have some health benefit. Mm -hmm. They do have some health benefit, but it's not, you know, fighting mm -hmm. cancer. You look at, for example, when they tell you that, you know, stop all sugar, mm -hmm. right? Sugar is associated with certain adverse health conditions, mm -hmm. like diabetes. Mm -hmm. And people who are having sugar, too much sugar, can end up being obese, mm -hmm. and that can be a risk factor for cancer. Mm -hmm. So there's that relationship that 
makes this feel credible. But when you look into the actual science about you know, sugar feeding cancer cells, the experts we told us, the, the experts whom we spoke to, told us that, you know, first of all, your body needs glucose. All cells need glucose. Yeah, all cells need glucose. And by the way, if you were to stop taking sugar today, your body would cut down proteins, it would, it would, it would break down fats, it would get the sugar from somewhere. And also the fact that, you know, um, they said there is no real evidence. There are no studies that show that stopping sugar will either cure your cancer, you know, or, you know, prevent, you know, or, or slow it down. Um, and one of the things we learned that they told us was that the body does not know how to differentiate between a healthy cell and a cancer cell when it comes to nutrients, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. They all use nutrients it's in the same nutrient. way, just circulate, yes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's not, there is no evidence that stopping sugar will slow down cancer. And um, so that's important for somebody to know who thinks that they can cure their cancer by just stopping mm -hmm. sugar. Okay. So I'm just thinking, what is the implication of such a post, especially to somebody who has cancer? if they now see this post is being shared. And you know, sometimes when posts are shared, like you'll find yourself in five, 10 groups, yes. and at times the same post goes in all, all the groups, yes. and even to your private mailbox. Yes. What are the implications for somebody who believes in some of this information? Well, the most immediate implication is that they don't get medical attention. They don't get medical attention, probably if they are on treatment, they stop. And so the outcomes are not as good as they should be. It's really important, I mean, to be seeing a doctor and getting your medical attention. And if you're believing this kind of thing, chances are you not only are not seeing a doctor, but you're not getting the proper information that you need, you know, in case of, for example, cancer prevention. Mm -hmm. And that means that you stay susceptible to you know, suffering the worst outcomes of a disease like this, mm -hmm. yeah. Because if somebody stops chemotherapy to take to lemon, for take example, lemon. Yes. That's, that's serious. Um, and even, even coconut oil, mm -hmm. you know, like, it's supposed to be this miraculous thing that will kill the cancer mm -hmm. immediately. And I think it's good that people know that there are no such miraculous mm -hmm. uh, benefits, that okay. there, are some, there are some health benefits but they won't kill cancer. Mm -hmm. So this is what we found when we asked, you know, oncologists to tell us about what lemon and coconut Coconuts. and sugar could do. Yeah. Now let's look at another story that, well, this time it's not cancer related, but uh, on the fact that, okay, not really the fact, yes. but the story was that intelligence is inherited from the mother. And this is actually something that yes. I personally had believed for some time really, that yes. intelligence is X-linked. Mm -hmm. Can we just open up that story? And it, it, it's interesting because um, um, what happens is, and, and you see a lot of, I think a lot of people make light of this. Mm -hmm. There's always that driving joke when the child brings the report from home. Oh, he's very smart, he, he gets that from me. Oh, he's very daft, he gets that from you. Yeah. There's always that running always joke, that. yes. And, and so this is very important. And again, you can see something that you think is not that important, when we did this check, it was shared 13,400 13, times. You can see that there. Mm -hmm. So people are really... And is, is this on Facebook or just on all social so this media was, platforms? This was posted on Facebook in South Africa. Mm -hmm. It was actually the clipping of a newspaper. Mm -hmm. So someone, someone clipped a newspaper, mm -hmm. and uh, someone clipped a newspaper, and they posted the clipping online mm -hmm. for people to read. And, 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 and a lot of people really went... Uh, a lot of people really went went to look at it, you see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you can see children inherit their intelligence from their mother, not their father. Mm -hmm. And the point they were making here is, because um, when we think about the biology of chromosomes and how heredity happens, mm -hmm. they were saying that, you see, the mother has two X chromosomes, mm -hmm. right? The father has only one. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the intelligence which is, you know, given by the mother is more likely to come, you know, the intelligence comes from the X, it's more likely to come from the mother because they are two. So that's the argument. Mm -hmm. And they mentioned something about having conditioned genes mm -hmm. that 
a certain gene only works if it is given by the mother mm -hmm. and intelligence was supposed yeah. to be one in this yeah. case so we spoke to specialists about this mm -hmm. and they told us first it doesn't work because the mother only ever donates one x chromosome yeah. yes and the father gives one so to the daughter, to the daughter and a y to the son mm -hmm. so it cannot be that the mother is giving two mm -hmm. but also the fact that there is you know there is not this thing called a conditioned gene mm -hmm. that you know works one way or the other there's no way you can say that the x chromosome mm -hmm. donated by the father is not going to work apparently because x chromosomes are supposed to come from the mother or any such thing mm -hmm. and then the other important point he made was that there is a difference between brain formation which is what the x chromosome deals with mm -hmm. brain formation and intelligence mm -hmm. and sure, uh, de brain development brain development exactly mm -hmm. brain development and intelligence mm -hmm. which is a range of so many other factors mm -hmm. like you know environment exposure diet a whole a whole range of things come together mm -hmm. you know before you can talk about intelligence as opposed to merely brain formation mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So for that reason, he told us it's absolutely not true mm -hmm. that you know intelligence depends on. So that. it's like this um, got some element of truth yeah. and simplified it to just exactly covering it in one X chromosome in this case. But now it's the mother. Yes. That you know. The, so there's there's a, there's a small kernel of truth in there mm -hmm. that the mother is giving two X's and the father only one, mm -hmm. and from there you. The, the person doing this felt free to run wild and now build the falsehood around that truth. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it go. Uh -huh. And here they've quoted the independent, yes. which would sort of give it some, you know, mm -hmm. give readers a confidence that, you know, this is from a credible source. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that, that happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. They will do such a thing. Mm -hmm. Part of the problem is that on the one hand, you you get, uh, if, if a newspaper, even a respectable newspaper makes a mistake, mm -hmm. it also runs, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that's one thing that when you look at misinformation, uh, as opposed to disinformation, which is deliberate. So if a, a newspaper is supposed to make a mistake and information that is wrong gets out there, mm -hmm. uh, that's misinformation, mm -hmm. then those ones are particularly, uh, they're particularly, I'd say, pernicious because you have a credible organization. Um, so in this case, you can see that what happened was the clearly, um, we don't know if it's the independent of England, mm -hmm. because it's just a Facebook post floating around, mm -hmm. but um, that can help to give it a bit more fuel. Mm -hmm. um, but what we found was that clearly in this case, uh, you know, the whole idea of you know, the mother giving two X's did not result in, in, in intelligence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. Sorry. So the other, the other thing, and this one, uh, the World Health Organization has actually identified as one of the public health um, threats, and this is to do with vaccines, yes. where information on vaccines has actually stopped people from um, vaccinating their children, taking yes. their children for immunization as is supposed to be. And this one uh, particularly uh, linked autism to vaccines. Yes. And in this case, they say the information was actually published yes. by a doctor. So could you just tell us this one? And well, so you're absolutely right. Um, the whole problem about vaccines mm -hmm. um, dates back in part to the year 1998. That was the year a doctor called Andrew Wakefield mm -hmm. published in The Lancet an article in which he said that there was a link between uh, MMR, the MMR vaccine, measles, measles mumps, and mumps, rubella, rubella and autism. Um, so what ended up happening was that Andrew Wakefield got struck off mm -hmm. because some of the way he had done his research was not procedural, including you know, being funded by people who were suing some vaccine makers and uh, things that were not declared. Mm -hmm. And, and he also had a patent for his own measles yes, he vaccine. Had, he had created a patent, so he was looking to profit on the side if something happened from, you know, if something happened to this vaccine that he was fighting. Um, so Andrew Wakefield got struck off. But the work that he did and the whole 
problem he created has continued to fester for years and years. And so what the world, has, the world Health Community has been doing is getting all these studies and seeing uh, if we can find out whether there's a relation between the MMR vaccine, measles, mumps, and rubella, and autism. Mm -hmm. And this study here is only the latest of them. And the reason why it is receiving as much play as it is, because it was published all over the world. Mm, this was on 16th April of this year. Of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so the New York Times ran it, you know, the NHS in England wrote a huge story about it. It went everywhere. And the reason was because it was one of the most powerful experiments in terms of statistics in what it showed. So what did it show? What this study showed, um, they took 600,000 children which is a big number. Mm -hmm. How did they arrive at 600,000 children? So this is a Danish study. Mm -hmm. They went to the registration data, mm -hmm. uh, the public, the, the registration data, so the birth records of these children. Mm -hmm. And they found all the children who had been born between 1999 and 2010. And there were 600,000 of them. And they followed them until they were eight years old. So this was what they call a cohort, mm -hmm. yeah? Cohort study. And what they found was that of those 600,000 children, 95% of them were vaccinated, mm -hmm. right? Yet, when they looked at how many children had actually contracted autism after that period, developed autism. how many had developed, mm -hmm. yes, they found it was 6,000 of them. So one in 100 after 10 years. Mm -hmm. But that still was not, you know, that didn't prove anything as such. Mm -hmm. They then looked to see, uh, using a metric called the hazard ratio, they, they looked to see if there was any likelihood of vaccinated children and non-vaccinated children getting autism. Was it bigger in either? And what they found was that there was really no difference, difference in the likelihood of each group getting autism. And so what the, the, the value of this study is that it is, um, it's a very big number. And so what it has done is, it, is it, it showed that really there was no link between the vaccine and autism and no link between other vaccines and autism as well because they were looking at how these children were treated, the vaccines they got and risk factors that apparently lead to autism such as you know your birth order and things like that. And so this, this study is supposed to be one of the very strongest that is refuting this fact. So. Um, and and it's, it's seen as very important because vaccine hesitancy. It, it, it's, it's a big problem actually, that's why the West is having episodes of measles, measles outbreaks yes. here and there. Yes. And measles was actually one of those uh, diseases that was thought to have been eradicated, especially in the West. Yes. Okay. And, and, uh, like just to add, Mali, vaccine hesitancy is one of uh, the so big reasons behind the founding of Africa Check. Mm -hmm. Because um, Around 2003, there was a huge polio mm. campaign in Nigeria. And because of misinformation about what polio did to people, a lot of people did not get vaccinated. A lot of mothers did not take their children to be vaccinated. And so that left Nigeria as one of only three countries in the world, uh, next to Pakistan mm -hmm. and Afghanistan, where wild polio virus has not been impeded because mm. still continues to spread. It's, it's one of the three for that reason. It was like, now we are seeing that they've made a lot of progress and they are hoping, I guess, that they can officially be recognized as having eradicated the disease. So, like, but they lost a lot of time because of misinformation. That, uh, yes. So yeah. what I did was I asked him, mm -hmm. uh, I asked Asmali, uh, I think his DMs are open, if I remember right. mm. so well, in Kenya, we, we do see, we've seen a public, uh, there was a recent public outcry, but this was over tetanus. Yes. yes. So around 2017, uh, it even got to the point where, you know, opposition, certain opposition politicians were saying, don't, don't vaccinate your children for tetanus. And it's an issue that Africa Czech has followed quite keenly, and every time it comes out, we do, we do a piece, we do an article, we do a rebuttal that says that, you know, uh, this 
has been shown not to have any problems. And I think that one of the people we spoke to said, look, if tetanus has had all these problems for all this time, you would probably by now see it in the demographics. So uh, this is, this is for in Kenya, tetanus, uh, but we know that in other countries we've seen polio and definitely measles in America and in Europe. Yeah. We'll take a short break and when we come back, we'll tell you how to do fact checking and especially reverse search on images that may seem to be credible.